Hello, I'm Andrew Holden. I'm from uh, Auckland Hospital in Auckland, New Zealand, and I'm the Director of uh, Interventional Radi Radiology for the Northern Regional uh, Group of Hospitals in New Zealand. Uh, I'm going to be discussing today uh, the uh, impact AV access uh, randomised controlled trial, and uh, specifically we're going to, going to look at the uh, three-year results which were presented for the first time at the Charing Cross Symposium uh, several days ago. Well, the impact AV access study uh, is a prospective multi-centre, a multinational randomised controlled trial comparing uh, plain balloon angioplasty to drug-coated balloon angioplasty for the treatment of hemodialysis access circuit stenoses. Uh, the trial was performed uh, in the United States, uh, Japan, and New Zealand, and involved 330 patients who were randomized to angioplasty, that was high-pressure balloon angioplasty, uh, followed by conventional angioplasty, or drug-coated balloon, which again was high-pressure balloon angioplasty in initially, followed by the uh, Medtronic Impact AV access drug-coated balloon. So there were uh, 330 patients uh, in this trial, randomized one-to-one -one between the plain balloon and drug-coated balloon uh, arms of the trial. There was a primary safety endpoint, which was a freedom from serious adverse events at 30 days. And there was also a primary efficacy endpoint, which was target lesion primary patency, which was defined as freedom from clinically driven target lesion revascularization or access circuit uh, thrombosis uh, out to six months or 210 days. Obviously, uh, there was further follow-up. Initially, patients were consented for two-year follow-up, but uh, subsequently reconsented out to five-year follow-up, and we are presenting the three-year data uh, and discussing that now. Well, as we just think about the trial, it, in fact, uh, the patients uh, were very uh, equally randomized in terms of patient demographics. There were no significant differences between the two trial cohorts. About 70% of the patients uh, were re-stenotic lesions in each arm of the trial, and uh, the remainder being uh, de novo lesions. And in terms of the stenosis location in the AV access circuit, that was also equally matched between the two arms of the trial with the most common locations of the stenosis being the AV anastomosis, the venous outflow, and the cephalic arch. We presented and published actually in the New England Journal of Medicine, the primary patency data, which was the six month data. And this was the first uh, large randomized trial of a drug coated balloon in AV access to well and truly meet its primary efficacy endpoint so that the uh, primary patency of the uh, drug-coated balloon arm was uh, 86%, which was uh, highly significantly better than the plain balloon arm. Now, we've seen that patency advantage being sustained out to 12 months initially, and uh, just recently the 12-month data has been published in the Journal of Vascular and Interventional Radiology, along with an economic uh, analysis which shows that the drug-coated balloon is cost-effective. And then last year at the Charing Cross Symposium, we presented the 24-month data, again showing a significant patency advantage for the drug-coated balloon over the plain balloon. And uh, now I'm uh, pleased to announce the uh, primary patency data at 36 months. And really incredibly, we still see this patency advantage for the drug-coated balloon, where the primary patency of the drug-coated balloon was 43% compared to 28.6% for the plain balloon. Just to put that primary patency data into some sort of context, we don't have many studies reporting uh, long-term or three-year patency data. They're mainly single center studies with no core lab adjudication, but the on average uh, primary patency is in the order of 20 to 25%. So to, to get a, a primary patency of 43% uh, was really uh, very impressive. One of the things we've also uh, always discussed is the number of reinterventions required to maintain target lesion patency. 
And what we've found is that if you look at the uh, cohort of patients randomized to the drug-coated balloon and compare them to uh, those randomized to the plain balloon, then the drug-coated balloon um, patients on average experienced a 21% reduction in the number of reinterventions to maintain patency. And for patients who already uh, go through a lot in hemodialysis, I think this is a very significant finding. Well, one thing I, uh, I didn't mention was uh, all-cause mortality. And obviously in the past, there's been some concerns about paclitaxel and all-cause mortality. I think uh, that's largely been resolved, but I'm happy to say at uh, three years, there was uh, absolutely uh, no difference in all-cause mortality between the two treatment arms. So there's no safety concern with paclitaxel. I think we now have data to say that there is a sustained patency benefit for using the impact AV drug-coated balloon and AV access intervention compared to the standard treatment of plain balloon angioplasty. And we've seen that in all locations in the AV access circuit. We've seen no safety concerns, and we've now got some data saying that it's a highly cost-effective procedure to be doing. So, you know, I believe we're now at the point where we really should be considering this as standard of care, really for all AV access stenoses. I think for, uh, for institutions starting off with this approach, and I often get asked, where should we start? I think the most high-risk lesions are the re lesions and also the lesions at the AV anastomosis and cephalic arch. But certainly for our institution, this has become standard of care for all management of AV access uh, stenoses. Well, I think uh, you know, the long-term, any further long-term follow-up for this particular patient group is really about safety and we've seen no safety signals. So I don't think we're gonna get any more efficacy data. I think it's pretty mature in three years patency in patients with chronic renal failure on hemodialysis is actually a long, long-term result. So I think we've, we've really got mature data for the management of uh, AV access stenosis, but we still have some questions. For example, we know 30 to 40% of all the fistulas that are created for dialysis failed to mature. And there is some evidence to suggest that drug-coated balloon angioplasty can be very effective in actually promoting fistula maturation. That's a study I think we still need to uh, have done. And also the management of central venous stenoses. Uh, the lesions in this trial were only in the access circuit, not the central veins. So that's another area where we need to assess the impact of drug-coated balloons.